Welcome, everybody, to the Brotherhood of Gaming video game show. The only video game show that instills fear into those who prey on the fearful. I'm your host, William Morris. And I'm Robbie, the robot. What are you supposed to be, anyway? Isn't it obvious? I'm a retired robot. Geez, that's kind of a low blow. Eh, I've hit lower. Well, it's that time of the month again. The month where the forces of light dwindle under the darkness and the creatures from the night come and run amok all around the city. It's October, it's Halloween, it's what happens. But it's also the month where horror movies and horror video games are quite abundant. Don't forget the candy. That's true. And today we're going to take a look at one of the newest installments in the genre, The Evil Within. Now, this review was personally requested by a good friend and a fan of the show, Devin, who has moved on up into the world and is now saving lives one paramedic truck at a time. Way to go, man. Congratulations. This one is all for you. Now, the game The Evil Within was released by Bethesda Softworks and developed by Tango Gameworks. Now, before there's any confusion, we're going to be taking a look at the Xbox 360 version and the PlayStation 3 version, since those were the ones that we got. However, the game has been released for just about every current generation of consoles that there is, from the Xbox 360 to the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, all the way to the PC. So, let's go and get started, Rob. I thought we were playing Castlevania. Oh, I love Castlevania too, but we gotta at least try new things, right? This game could be really good. Fine. Story and presentation! As far as visual differences, I'm not gonna pretend that there aren't any minor ones, but I'll go into further detail about that near the end of the video. Without giving away too much, you begin the game as main character and detective Sebastian, along with his partners to solve supposedly some grisly murders and missing cases that have been plaguing the city for quite some time. Unfortunately, on one of their assignments, things get too weird to even properly define, and the group is separated from each other and possibly by a supernatural or paranormal means. From here, Sebastian will be traveling through what feels like every monster movie and horror game ever created, almost like he's traveling through an even unluckier version of Dante's Inferno. The story so far is pretty good as the characters you are partnered with aren't your status quo type of losers who run and scream, but actually will apply themselves to helping the situation and figuring things out. Not to mention being helpful in times of a crisis. I mean, these are the police after all. The story does carry itself in a very sophisticated manner and is a little convoluted in some areas, but we feel that helps make it a little creepier not being able to comprehend what's going on around the players, even if some of it's rational and fully explainable. It has some quirky moments where it may look and feel familiar in some areas, but we believe that it's paying homage to classics rather than trying to steal anything like a few numbnuts actually believe. I mean, really? This should have been a dead giveaway. The Evil Within offers all too familiar gameplay styles, and guess what, it doesn't suck at doing them. After playing it for a while, you can see some similarities between it and a few other survival horror games. It's like The Evil Within took what worked in others and applied them to this one, which is pretty clever. Out of the fear of spoiling too many scenes, we're going to be very thrifty on the footage as to keep the surprises of the game intact. Now the whole game has this letterbox overlay, keeping the game feel like a motion picture, which is pretty neat, actually. However, unfortunately, this makes the view a little smaller. Why is this an issue? Well, for the most part, the camera is a little too focused on Sebastian, whereas in a game like this, you'll want to be more aware of your surroundings rather than your character's head. It doesn't get too bad, it's only a minor issue, but sometimes the camera positions itself in a very unhelpful location. Again, it doesn't hinder the game that much, and you pretty much will get used to it as you play along. As far as game feel, The Evil Within has combined elements from Resident Evil, Silent Hill, and Dead Space. Its weapon system and health taken from the newer Resident Evil games, its scare and uneasiness anxiety from Silent Hill, as well as its texture blending, specifically from Downpour, 
and its melee attacks and upgrades from Dead Space. With a few exceptions and other recognizable traits from other horror icons, we won't further detail. This makes the Evil Within a familiar but unique experience that feels new even when presented in a fashion that we're all aware of. It's very welcoming in that regard, giving us as the player a little bit of an edge and to possibly appeal to certain tastes. While exploring the world, Sebastian is armed and ready. Depending on what difficulty you are playing the game on, the game will determine how much ammunition, items, and objects you can collect and use. While traversing the horror zones around you, you will be stalked by creepers of strange proportions. There's a lot of variety in the enemy selection. You have just about every frightening creature coming after you. Well, save for Count Dracula. Some of them are kind of tricky to fight, too. Hell, some of them are even invisible. Yeah, that's fair. It sucks to shoot aimlessly hoping you hit something when you're not given a lot of ammo to work with here. Aside from using guns, you can also punch the enemies and stomp them on the ground. If you're not dealing with too many at once, your melee attacks can actually be very helpful, as sticking and moving is good with response time. But you better get really good with it real fast because it doesn't take much for the monsters to kill you. And it goes without saying, but there are some enemies out there that I wouldn't even try to approach, let alone punch. Some of the items that you collect are helpful in upgrading Sebastian himself, such as jars of green stuff, and keys that you can randomly hunt down hidden in statues. These keys allow you to unlock safe boxes in Sebastian's safe room, which can have helpful items. And the jars, when collected, give you points that you can use to upgrade Sebastian's arsenal and his abilities, which is also done in the safe room. Abilities such as sprinting longer, melee attacks dishing out more damage, more health, more ammunition usage, better accuracy with the weapons, and well, you get the idea. Depending on your playstyle, it's pretty much going to be all up to you to figure out the best upgrades to use for your progression. One thing we were kind of worried about was the narrative. In horror games, it's not too easy to do, especially if you want the player to get invested into the characters, and the build-up doesn't exactly introduce you to anybody either. Yet, each time you find a save room, you're given a police journal which you can read to gain more insight on your character's life and feelings. Very similar to Silent Hill, with half the story being hidden within journals and papers scattered. It's far greater than forcing a narrative that may have nothing to do with the topic at hand. Now lastly, the puzzles. There are quite a few of them. Some of them I figured out by pure accident, and some of them had to make me ponder and think for a minute whether I was making the right choice, as well the wrong one could lead to your death. All in all, if you use some common sense, you'll be fine. Also, be mindful when running around corridors as there are always traps to disarm. Luckily, our main characters are pretty good at it. When coming across trip wires or bombs, take your time to disarm them. They could be beneficial in the long run. Music and sound. sound! The atmosphere in this score definitely adds to the game's feel. Sometimes, while quiet, the music can pick up and give an adrenaline rush to keep the player on edge for the scares to sink in. Other times, the orchestral music in disturbing areas will keep the anxiousness feel to a maximum. Even the sounds are pretty jarring sometimes, but nothing that can't be handled. Graphics, 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 graphics. Oh, here we go. Graphics are a very controversial topic, especially among hipsters and elitists who believe that if a game is not running at a constant 60 frames per second, that the whole game is garbage and not worth playing. You know, I cannot believe I share a hobby with these people. And yes, those people exist, and it's kind of sickening. And they are stupid. Hey, look, if a game lags or is choppy, yeah, that is bad. I can get behind that. Whether it be 30 frames, 29 frames, 59, 60, does any of that really matter? I can give the FPS gamers some leeway for online gaming, as they might need every eighth of a second to react, but for an offline single player campaign? I mean, come on, you all were playing Gears of War, which ran at 45 frames per second and even less when someone threw two smoke grenades. And you played through it fine. You should be just fine as long as you can play it smoothly enough. Truthfully, after playing video games for well over 20 years, I barely recognize that stuff. If a game is noticeably choppy, that's one thing. But to completely deem a game garbage without playing it just because it's not running at 60 frames per second has to be some of the stupidest reasoning I have ever heard. As for graphical comparisons, well, yeah, there are some, but most of them are mixed whether which one looks better. Hey, and I'm all for graphics and having a game look 
as great as it possibly could be. But again, when this stuff takes precedence over what really makes a game good, then there really is a problem. Regardless of which console you play The Evil Within on, it looks great. The differences in quality for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, to the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 are not as cut and dry as, say, a game that was on the PlayStation 3 and on the Nintendo Wii, where clearly you could see the limitations and differences between the hardware. But here, there really is barely any. The visuals on the newer consoles may in some cases look a bit better and shinier, but the overall performance and the game remains usually unaffected, at least with what we've seen so far. In the end, you're getting a good game no matter what system you decide to play it on. And as long as you're having fun, that's all that truly matters. Well, there you guys have it. The Evil Within for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, as well as the PlayStation 4 or whatever you're playing it on. If you enjoyed this review, please subscribe and like the video. Or if you don't... Well, then you can F off. What he said. But, as always, guys, be safe out there during this month. Have your parents check all your candy because there's real weirdos out there. Be safe when you go out and do your thing. And we'll see you next time. Welcome to the Brotherhood of Gaming.